Welcome to video number eight in microfluidics. So in this video, we're gonna be doing section six, which is about mixing in microsystems. So in section 6.1 there, we're gonna be looking at why mixing is so challenging in microsystems. And then building on that in sections 6.2 and 6.3, we're gonna look at two different strategies for how we could accomplish mixing in these microsystems. So to kick off this section here, I actually wanna talk first about a textbook in microfluidics that I really like. So here's the cover of it. It's called Introduction to Microfluidics by Patrick Tabling. And when I was first making this course, I used this textbook as a guide for some of these sections here. This section here, for example, is loosely based on what's covered in the textbook in section 3.7 there. So you'll see I sort of loosely follow that here. And this is just to say, if you're looking for more details or you wanna go a little bit more in depth, that's actually a textbook I'd recommend for it. There are a few others that are quite great. This is just one that I found to be really good at explaining these things. Okay, so that's where you can go if you want some more details. Now, moving along here. So we've seen in our earlier videos that we have small Reynolds numbers in these microsystems. And what that actually means is we don't develop these hydrodynamic instabilities, right? So we don't have turbulence and chaos which is normally how we mix things. And that's why it's really difficult to mix in these microsystems within these micro channels, right? So the question then is, how can we mix things when we do need to mix them in our microsystems at these small scales? And we remember from our previous video, if we were gonna rely on just diffusion alone, this table here shows what the mixing times would be, so how long it would take to mix. Okay, so we can see, firstly, if we have dye in water, and water is fairly small molecules, right? But at the macro scale, 10 centimeters, we would have a mixing time 10 to the five seconds. So that's that line there, which is actually 100,000 seconds, right? Or 27 hours, so a fairly long time. Whereas if we got down to a very small micro scale system, like at one micron with these small water molecules, then the mixing time is very fast. We see it's 10 to the minus three seconds on that line there. Right? But if we're looking at sizes that are a little more realistic for our microsystems, again, if we just look at water, it's about 10 seconds. That's not too bad for a dimension of 100 microns. But more realistically, we're gonna be mixing things that are generally more complex than that, so fairly larger molecules. And so if we look at this example on the bottom line of enzymes and proteins, their mixing time in a microreactor that's sized at about 100 microns would be 1,000 seconds. So that actually starts to become a little bit of an issue if you're trying to develop a microsystem where there's multiple steps in the process or you need to have reactions and mixing, and that's almost 17 minutes. That's a long time to wait if you're relying on this mixing to occur purely by diffusion. Now, the question is, what do we do, right? So this figure that I'm showing at the bottom here will firstly help us understand what it's not really possible to do. Now you would think if you had a channel like this and you put a bunch of pillars in the middle of it, the flow is going in this case from left to right. Now if this was fast enough and if it was at the macro scale, these pillars would disturb the flow enough and so you would have eddies or you would have small wakes forming behind the pillars and they would contribute to this chaotic mixing. So they would churn up the flow, we would have turbulence and that would help us mix the flow. But you can't do that at the micro scale. What happens is the streamlines are shown here along these paths here and it would just, the particles would just flow along like this, right? I just pretend I'm actually following the streamline. And so the streamlines move a little bit, but at the beginning and at the end, they're fairly similar. And so the flow itself doesn't mix the fluid particles on different streamlines because we have no chaos or no incorporation of these streamlines to interact or mix amongst the particles on the other streamlines, right? And so we can't really use the things that we generally think of when we're at the macro scale because turbulence at low Reynolds numbers is not gonna occur. And so there are basically two strategies we can use instead when we're at low Reynolds numbers. The first thing we can do is just generate a very small chamber or a very small scale feature. Because we've seen if we rely on diffusion, if things are very small, we can decrease the mixing time. So one approach is to just have things become very small in our system, and I'll talk about that coming up in section 6.2. And then our second strategy which we'll talk about in section 6.3, is to mimic or simulate the chaos. And so if we can sort of try to replicate this rotation or these eddies or like what we see in turbulence, we can use this sort of induced chaos to mix the flow. Okay, so those are the two things we're gonna look at. Okay, so in section 6.2, we're gonna dive in here and talk about micro mixers based on size reduction. 
Okay, now firstly, if we look at the mixing time, this is the time it takes to mix based purely on diffusion. We remember that that expression is approximately the width of our channel squared divided by our diffusion coefficient, as we saw in the previous videos. Now, if we want to figure out how long does a channel have to be to accomplish this mixing, we can figure that out by saying that length will be equal to our velocity that the fluid is traveling at times how long it takes to mix. And the velocity in our channel can be written as our volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area. So we'll say B is our height and W is our width here, just to keep the notation similar to what's common in the field. We multiply that, of course, by our mixing time. Simplify the width there. And then we see that our length necessary to achieve mixing is this expression right here. And the reason that helps us out so much, and the power of understanding the theory here, right, is that in looking at that expression, now as designers, we can figure out how do we minimize the length required. So we can look at these variables and figure out how do we make the length smaller. Okay, now generally our Q is likely to be set based on the process here that we're trying to accomplish. So how much of this fluid we need to process over a given time. So generally Q is not a variable we change, although we could, of course, we could. You can see if we decrease the flow rate there, the length will be smaller. The height of the channel is another one, that B variable there. We tend to leave that one fixed. And our diffusion coefficient is something that's set by the properties of the substances that we're using. So most commonly, the variable we're going to change here is the width, is W. And again, we can see the length value will be proportional to that. So if I have the width of our channel, I have the length that it takes to accomplish this mixing. So some strategies were developed around making very small channels. So if you're flowing through a system and then you decide to have mixing in one section, for that one little section, you can make your channel width very, very narrow. So as it flows through that one little tiny compartment, the diffusion will mix it very, very quickly. And then you can expand back out or send it to the different channels that you need to use in your actual microsystem. And so the picture at the bottom left here shows an example of that where we have fluid A coming from the top, fluid B coming from the bottom. To mix them as they flow again from left to right through this chamber here, you have this mixing section right here where the width is much smaller. And so as it travels through that very narrow channel there, the mixing will be enhanced because the mixing from diffusion is gonna be so quick, right? There's another really interesting example of how they did this. Instead of actually making the, the physical channel smaller, what they did was squeeze the fluid flow down between two flows. And I've listed the reference there that the figure's from. It's called hydrodynamic focusing on a silicon chip mixing nanoliters in microseconds. And so you can see they have these two flows coming from the top and the bottom of the figure here. Then you have this inlet flow that they want to mix. And so what happens is as these flows, right, move down into this channel here, they actually squeeze the width down. So we're showing width of the channel here, but the width of that fluid, right, is much, much smaller. So because the width of that is so small, now the mixing occurs very quickly, right? And so that's the trick we can use. If we make, even for a very small section, if we make the channels very narrow, we can get diffusion to mix very quickly for us. Now I wanna talk about another example that's come up in my research and is really interesting. So in capillary driven systems, when we use like a paper-based microsystem, for example, I've shown a picture of a scanning electron microscope image that we took in the top right. And an interesting thing is mixing and some reactions were found to occur quicker in paper substrates. And actually we think that's because there's these small chambers, the paper forces it to flow through these very small little chambers. And so because the diffusion is much higher at these small length scales, we get the mixing to occur much faster. So that was another really cool thing we saw in these paper-based microsystems. Same basic idea, mixing at the small scales using diffusion. Okay, now the other strategy we're gonna look at in section 6.3 here is a chaotic mixing, where we sort of generate our own chaos to try to do the mixing the same way like turbulence would do it in a macro scale system. And I think the best way to look at this, kind of like we did in section 6.2, is to look at actual examples, actual applications of this occurring. So I've got this one here, it's from a paper, the reference is at the bottom of the slide there. This is called a herringbone micro mixer. So up in the top left here, what we see is, we see this channel with these angled grooves cut into the bottom of it. So the flow is actually coming along this direction, again, left to right. Now, what happens is because of these grooves, the flow at the bottom of this channel is forced to move outwards along this direction. 
And then because of mass conservation, right, it will end up blowing up and around and coming back down. And on the other side, so this is actually shown in this cross section here. So you'll have these larger eddies on the one side. And then on this side where it flows from the smaller groove, it'll have like a smaller circulation. And then what they did here was to vary them back and forth. So then the smaller side is then on this side, which was the longer side before, and the longer side is flipped to the other side, right? And so you end up with a flow that looks like this, where the larger circulation is on the other side of the channel now, and the smaller, likewise, is on the other side. So there's a smaller one, and there's a larger one, and they flip places, right? And then they go back and forth. So again, they switch it again right here, okay? And they go back and forth, and that's trying to simulate this chaos, right? And so you can see in these images here with the dark fluid and the lighter fluid, what this mixing starts to look like after a few cycles. Now on the right, we can get a real appreciation for this. And so they've got the darker flow coming through this side and that lighter yellow flow coming down this side of the channel right here. Now without any mixing, of course, at our nice low Reynolds numbers, you get a flow like this where there would be this very little bit of mixing from diffusion sort of right along that center line right there. And in B here, what they wanna show is if you don't have this herringbone type design where you have the grooves smaller and larger and rotating back and forth, if you just had grooves along the bottom of the channel here, like shown here, you would end up with some mixing and it's not bad. So that's over the length of three centimeters. But as they've shown in C here, Right? If you use their pattern where it rotates like back and forth, okay, and you have this, again, this distance of three centimeters all the way along, now you look at the final state at cycle 15 there, that's much more substantially mixed, right, than we had above, okay? And you can really see this is great images here, right? You can see from cycles one through five. So that's cycle one, and down here we have cycle five. You can just really see how effective that mixing is, right, when they're sort of simulating that chaos. Really love to look at this, right? It's quite a clever way to do it. And this, of course, is not the only way we can accomplish this chaotic mixing. This is just one example of it to show how effective it can be. So, you know, you can come up with lots of different ways, right, to accomplish this. And there's lots of other really interesting ideas that have been investigated and published in this area. So this is just kind of showing you an example of generally how we would accomplish this. Okay, and that's everything I want to show for these mixing strategies at the micro scale. In the next video, we'll be finishing off the transport discussion part of this course. And it'll be a discussion of that paper I mentioned at the end of the last video. It's called Making It Stick, Convection Reaction and Diffusion in Surface-Based Biosensors. And so remember to have a read through that paper before watching the next video. And I'll do a brief discussion of it in that next video. And so in summary here, we did section six, which was mixing in microsystems. We first talked about why it's so challenging to mix in microsystems because they're at low Reynolds number and we don't have these hydrodynamic instabilities. So we can't generate this turbulence that we would normally use for mixing. Then in section 6.2, we looked at one strategy for mixing in microsystems, which is to just take advantage of very small length scales and use the diffusion to mix for us, right? So make a channel very narrow for a time and mix in there. And then in section 6.3, we looked at chaotic mixing. So it was kind of like making your own sort of simulated turbulence, right? To cause mixing of the flow. Okay, and that's all for video number eight. Thanks for watching.